Hello and welcome back. This is an overview about the rigging of quadruped characters for the second life environment. I will give you a step-by-step -step introduction into the creation of a basic horse skeleton. I show you in great detail how to rig the model. I will adjust some of the weights by using the weight paint tools. And finally I will create a very simple static pose for the export to second life. So, let's open Blender with the model of a horse. Note that this model is also distributed within the fourth lesson of our online course, Non-Human Rigging. And when you have purchased the course then you are also free to use the model, even within your own commercial projects. Okay, let's proceed by adding a new Avastar character into the scene. So to begin, I recommend to move the horse to a separate layer. You can do this by first selecting the model, then pressing the M key, and select in which layer the horse shall become visible. Note that you later can enable or disable the visibility of multiple layers by pressing the Shift key, and then click the corresponding layer icons. OK. Our next task will be to change the default character's skeleton into a horse skeleton. Here we have to take care about some restrictions which are imposed by the Second Life animation system. The most important point is, we cannot use additional bones to improve the skeleton. So whatever we create here, it always has to use the Second Life basis bones or the collision volume bones, and nothing else. But luckily Avastar has been designed with these restrictions in mind. Let's select the armature in pose mode. Then go to the tool shelf. Open the Avastar tab. And locate the rigging panel. Here, you find the bone visibility section. This section is currently collapsed. You can expand it by hitting the small plus sign on the left side. Also by default, we see a set of green control bones. These bones are mainly used to create poses. In addition to the control bones, we also have the set of blue second life bones. These are the bones which later are needed to define the weight maps for deforming the meshes. The blue bones and the green bones are tightly related to each other, that is, for each blue bone, we have a corresponding green counterpart. By default only the green control bones can be moved and rotated. However, each blue bone always follows the movements of its green counterpart. Later we will see that Avastar provides tools for the automatic adjustment of the second life bones. Hence we actually do not need to bother with these bones at all. Instead of that let's forget the blue bones for now, and only edit the green control bones. So, let's go ahead and prepare the Avastar character. First of all we delete the default Avastar meshes, because we really do not need them for the horse. You can do this by navigating to the Object Properties section of the armature, and locate the Avastar shape panel. There use the function, delete Avastar meshes. But of course you also can delete the meshes manually if you prefer. Now let's enable the visibility of the horse layer. Furthermore, let's change the rig display as follows, open the bone display panel. Then from the available visibility presets select, edit. This puts the armature into edit mode, and it enables the visibility of most of the editable bones. However, since we do non-human character modeling, we additionally have to enable another subset of bones, the extra bones. I cannot tell it often enough, but you have to ensure that you only modify the green control bones. So, you should never touch the blue second life bones in edit mode. And when I say, never, then I really mean, never ever. If you decide to not follow this advice, then I predict that you eventually will step into some serious pitfalls when you begin to use Avastar's and Blender's animation tools. 
Anyways, the edit preset takes care of all of this for you, and now we are finally ready to edit the skeleton. For the begin, let me move the eye target a bit closer. We will take more care of this particular bone later, when we prepare the head. Now select all visible bones by pressing the keyboard key A, twice. And move the bone such that the horse's hind legs roughly match up with the legs of the human skeleton. Now we change the human skeleton step by step into a horse skeleton. Fortunately Blender gives us a couple of tools to make our life easier here. First we can use the fact that the skeleton is symmetrical. For example take a look at the hip joint. When we enable Axe Mirror in the Tool Shelf Options tab, then editing a bone will automatically apply the mirrored operation to the bone on the other side of the rig. We also must be aware that some bones hide other bones, as you can see for example on the ankle bone. In this case you can always use the rubber band select, by pressing B on the keyboard, and then span the selection region over the joints or bones which you want to move. Finally, begin to move the bones into place. Okay, we can now move upwards along the horse legs, and adjust the bones as needed. You see that I frequently switch between using the rubber band select and right clicking on a joint. When we get up to the center of gravity bone, then we have to take care of it. First let me select the entire upper part of the skeleton and rotate it by about 90 degrees. Then let's take a closer look at the pelvis bone. Actually you see two pelvis bones here, created in opposite directions. We will keep these bones as they are, we only select the end joints of both bones, and move them a bit towards the horse's back. This will later become relevant, when we get to animation. And let's make the center of gravity bone bigger, so that we can grab it easily when we later animate the horse. Now let's continue to adjust the upper part of the skeleton. Again I frequently switch between grabbing a single joint, and using the rubber band select, when I want to select or deselect multiple joints or bones at the same time. It is also good to adjust the eye target now. Up till now I have only worked in side view. Now let's adjust the hind legs in back view. You can enable back view by first pressing the control key, and then select front view on the number pad. Now let's hide the hind legs for a moment, so that we can concentrate on the front legs. And let's switch to front view. 
Let's first adjust the eye's location. It is a bit tricky to actually select a bone when it is in front of another bone. So let's move out of front view for a moment. Then select the eye bone. And get back to front view and adjust the eyes as needed. And then adjust the arm bones to the horse's front legs. Here, take care to also move the tails of the somewhat hidden collar link bones. Finally go back to side view, and adjust the bones from there as well. Finally, unhide the hind legs again. And here it is, our horse skeleton is ready for usage. Well, no, not yet. Until now we have only worked on the green animation bones. Now it is time to take care again about the blue second life bones. So let's enable their visibility. You see they are still arranged as a human skeleton, so we now need to synchronize the blue bones with the edits of the green ones. But don't worry, we have a function for this. Open the tool shelf and search for the Deform Bone Constraints panel, and there click on, Snap Base to Rig. OK, on first sight, it looks like the SL bones have been deleted, but actually they only have been snapped to the control bones. We can see much better what happens when we enter pose mode. Oh! This doesn't look as expected. We still see a big clutter, even after we hide the SL bones. Well, we can disable the bone shapes so that the green control bones are drawn as octahedrals. And we can disable the display of the rotation limit guidelines. Now we can see clearly that the green bones and the blue bones are located at the same place, and all is well. Now, let's move on to our final task, namely rigging the horse and making an initial pose. So let's go to object mode, select the armature and the horse, and then look up the bind to armature function, in the skinning panel of the tool shelf. Note that we prepare a simple parenting without any weight copy, because actually we do not have any mesh from where we could copy weights. So let's use the keep option here which does not touch the weight tables during the parenting operation. Now, it is time for weighting the model. Select the horse, open the tool shelf, and locate the rigging panel. There, select the skin preset from the preset list. This will put the horse into weight paint mode, and the armature into pose mode. Furthermore the blue second life base bones have been made visible, and the green control bones have been hidden. And finally, the rotation constraints which tie the blue bones to the green bones have been disabled. And all of this is done on purpose. Remember that the blue second life base bones are responsible for the skeletal animation of the character. Because of that, these bones are also named deformed bones. And the character mesh, needs to carry the waiting tables for these deform bones. Hence we now have to leave the green animation control bones aside, and concentrate only on the blue bones instead. So, let's now generate our initial weight maps as follows. Begin by selecting all blue bones except the eye bones. Please take care here, because it is not so easy to see if the eye bones are selected or not. 
and now generate the weights by calling, weights, a sign automatic from Bones. Blender will now preset the weights to reasonable initial values. You can do a quick check by selecting individual bones, and examine how the weight maps are defined. At the very end, we have to check whether the weighting is good for our purposes. When we now rotate the skeleton bones, then we can check for obvious weighting errors, and fix them as needed. Well, when we bend the head, then we might see some issues with the vertices around the eyes. There we sometimes find some unweighted vertices. We can fix this quickly by weighting these vertices to the head bone. For this purpose we open the tools tab within the tool shelf. There we select the add brush. Preset the strength and the weight to a value of about 0.2 and then carefully paint onto the visible spikes, until they snap back to the head. Now we can proceed to the next step, namely animating our character. However, since this tutorial is only about rigging, let's just do a simple horse pose, and verify that the rig works as expected. But first and very important, let's select the pose preset from the rigging bone control panel. If we forget to do this, then the green control bones remain decoupled from the blue bones, which is certainly not what you want. Well, what you actually do want, is to disable the custom shapes, because they are optimized for human character animation. And of course you want to enable X-ray mode, otherwise the control bones will be mostly hidden inside the model. Finally, switch over to the armature, and create the pose in the same way as we created human poses in the past. Please note that for some bones you will see, the original constraints no longer work well. These bones can no longer be bended in a natural way. This is due to the bone constraints, which still are made for a human skeleton. If you want to know how to adjust this in an optimal way, then please check out our course about non-human character modeling. In the meantime we can fix this issue quickly, by disabling the constraints of the currently selected bones from within the properties sidebar of the 3D view. Actually, we even can select all bones at once, and disable all constraints by one click. Now let's go ahead and finish our simple pose. And finally, when the pose is finished, select all bones and then press the I key, to create a new keyframe. You want to select lock rot here. And at the very end, go to the render properties section, and export the pose as a second life animation. By now we can only create a static pose, because we have defined just one single frame and we will define an infinite loop, such that the horse keeps in that pose as long as the pose is active.
when we finally upload the model to Second Life, then we have to take care about two things. First, when you show weights in the previewer, you see the front legs get crossed. This is so, because the previewer uses the default stand pose for a human character. But we have modified the orientation of the arms when we bended them downwards in Blender to create the front legs. We will see in a moment that this issue will be solved, as soon as we upload our own stand pose. The other point is, whenever we have modified the skeleton, then we also must import joint positions. When we forget to do that, then our mesh will deform in unpredictable ways, when it is worn. So, let's now wear the mesh. Of course we again see the crossed front legs. So, let's also import the pose. And we see, as long as the pose plays, the front legs do what they are supposed to do. So, that's all that I wanted to show you in this tutorial. But we are not yet at the end of all possibilities. That is, you can also configure Avastar's IK rig for your horse, dog, fish, or for any other non-human shapes. If you want to learn more about how to get the most out of Avastar, then please consider to purchase our advanced tutorial non-human rigging for Second Life. The advanced tutorial contains an extended version of this video tutorial with many more tips and tricks. A detailed description about customizing the rig. And a commercially usable blend file of this horse model. Thank you for watching this video, and have a nice day.